a good audience in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, um, I mean, they're good. They're a good audience. Yeah. Challenge. I mean, yeah. Is it is it different from uh, playing in uh, the states, playing in Europe, playing here? Hmm? Um, it's kind of like playing in the Midwest in America, kind of the same similar energy. You know, the it's maybe more. I don't know. It's hard to say because every show we play here is different. Sometimes they go crazy. Sometimes they're very. Uh, they're, they're just. Uh, Analyzing what's going on, they're probably a little more analytical than uh, than you know uh, an audience in Texas or something who are just you know raising hell. But maybe it's a different show as well this time. What is your show was maybe different than, than the last times? Oh, that we were here. Yeah. Um. Different in uh, no, not that different. I mean, no. I mean, it, we're 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 doing the same thing, really. I mean, it it hasn't changed. It's evolved a little more. Uh, you know, it's like a shoe that's a little more worn in. You know, it feels more comfortable when you put it on, um, but it's still the same shoe. How did you work with it before going on the Midnight Watches tour? How did I what? How did you work with the live act, the live performance? Um, as far as what? Uh, okay. Putting these things together. The putting the show together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, uh, I, starting out as a folk singer, uh, I, I fell into having a band by accident. So it was always who was available. Most of my friends who were musicians were already in bands. They were already writing their own music. So I just would, would find whoever was in between a band and get them in my band. And uh, over the years, I've uh, I've kind of the band has evolved, and now there's kind of a, a permanent band. Um, so. So yeah, it's turned into something else. It's it's turned into something else that other than I started. It it's got its own personality aside from myself and my songwriting, and probably Midnight Vultures reflects that more than any of the other records. That record reflects the personality of this band. Uh, you know, myself and these other individuals, um, and it's just. Uh, it's it's taking a cue from a lot of my earlier records and you know combining punk with hip hop and all these different styles of music and uh creating this very aggressive uh chaos but it's it's also tempered by a uh, like a uh, an art sensibility you know cuz for me it was like uh when I was ten, and the and the radio dial in the car turned to to a station, all of a sudden "Whip It" by Devo came on. You know that kind of that changed things for me, because I wasn't really that interested in a lot of the hippie rock in the '70s. I just, you know, as a kid, I just tuned it out for the disco. But you know, when I heard "Whip It" or or the B-52s or Gary Newman and all that, you know, there's a certain kind of there's, their music is heavy. I mean, it rocks, but it has a, a, this other quality to it that um, I think we try to catch, capture. It's got a, a it's got like a, a punk energy, a punk rawness, but but it's also um, controlled and, and um, rigorous. It, it's like it, it tapped into the same rigorousness that it, that. James Brown and his band had. There's a lot of similarities between a Devo or a Kraftwerk to, to the JBs, you know. So seeing that link, and that's the link that we were, we we've tried to tap into. So where does the uh, like the interest of folk and uh, country music come from? That's kind of me. That's that's my, 
my personality. N nobody else in the band really comes from that. They, that's, uh, that's something that I have to draw them into. And, um, and I didn't choose to work with people who come from that background, really, because, um, you know, I'm, I spent so many years playing traditional music and playing exactly how it was on the records that I'm not really interested in that anymore. I'm interested in uh, coming through the back door, you know, approaching the folk music with, uh, with uh, different ears and a different point of view. I think it Where creates something, it creates a different sound. Where did you get the interest from? Mm -hmm. from? Where from did you get the interest? For folk music? Um, I don't know. Um, not really from my parents, and it wasn't like I was hanging out in Greenwich Village in 1965 and all the kids were listening, playing banjos. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I don't know where I got into it. I mean, I think, I think I've always been attracted to music that was in its, its primal state and its purest form. I'm always interested in going back to the earliest r source. In, in things, so, um, you know, when when Tom Waits started making all those uh, arty records in the 80s, you know, when I heard Captain Beefheart, you know, I was like, oh, that's the, that's the real damage, you know, that's the real, so I'm, I'm, I'm always going into that, I mean, I, I was into the Doors and the Stones a bit, and then, so there was a little bit of that Sunhouse, Robert Johnson flavor, um, some of that blues thing going on in their in their music, and and then when I somehow when I heard Sunhouse and Robert Johnson and uh, Mississippi John Hurt, then I'll you know I just uh, something lit up, and, uh, and I was I was just so attracted to it. I think it was because a lot of the music in the 80s was so artificial and uh, really slick and commercial. That was that was the the aesthetic of the time, you know, that was where the culture was at. <clears throat> and I didn't really relate to it. Um, you know, I didn't really relate to the Miami Vice suits and, and uh, all the movies about Wall Street and power and money and all that <laughs> had nothing to do with my life. So this music kind of spoke to me. Um, and uh, I think uh, I think another, I mean, I, of course I wasn't conscious of this at the time, but I think another reason maybe is coming from LA, there's not really a lot of sense of history there. There's no, there's, there's hardly any links to the past. You know, and even as a teenager, most of most of the neighborhoods that I knew when when I was really young were all torn down and turned into mini malls and developments and housing projects. And so the city that I grew up with was gone by the time I was a teenager. So um, in a way, this music was was like some kind of link with a past. You know. You could sing these words in, this, in the music, and you could know that the song was 200 years old, and it was like some ember of um, previous time. And being able to tap into that was just, uh, uh, I don't know, it gave me something. It, it, it fed something in me that was uh, left vacant by my environment. What way lived Well, just that there wasn't any sense of roots or history or the past. I mean, I know, I know that that can maybe be oppressive. You know, I have friends who grew up in Europe, and you know, it's beautiful all the old buildings, but sometimes the past is oppressive. You know, you want to have you create your own time, but um, I don't know. 